For this video, I decided to challenge myself to come up with 10 creative layering techniques that you can use to help make your sounds more unique. I really tried to think outside the box for this one, kicking things off with the first trick, call and response. Say for example, you have some kind of chord synth that decays over time. A really common technique is to duplicate and reverse each chord to lead into the next. This is a really effective trick, but to take it a step further, it can be much more interesting to emulate this by using a different instrument entirely. You can use any instrument you'd like, just make sure to set a slow attack. Number two, mechanical sampler sounds. Most of you probably have access to some kind of sampler instrument, be it third party or those included with your DAW. A lot of these plugins give you the ability to isolate the sample's mechanical sounds. This instantly gives you an extremely effective way to add texture and a sense of physicality to your synths. Let's first listen to the key sound Blue Boy from my preset pack Solect for Serum. And then layered with the mechanical noise. Really powerful stuff. Number three, key tracked noise. So this is one of my personal favorites. Firstly, you need some kind of noise sample. I actually have a free collection of noise samples on my site if you want some interesting ones to play around with. Here we have a descending chord progression. All we do is trigger our noise with the same MIDI, but add a key tracked bandpass filter. I used Serum for this, and as a quick side note, I actually learned during making this video that Serum's key tracking is polyphonic. If we crank the resonance, you can actually hear the chords themselves when we play just the noise. If we then layer this with our synth, it creates a pocket of texture around whichever notes are being played. Number four, pitch envelopes. Here we have a pretty simple arpeggio. Another quick trick for using noise creatively is first applying pitch envelopes to them. Then layering them with our synth. Number five, granular resampling. Here we have a key sound from my Serum Pack Select called Crystal. So here what I've done is bounce this to audio and dropped it into one of my favorite granular synths, Quanta by Audio Damage. I tweaked a few parameters like grain amount, size, width, and noise, and then automated the source playback position to sync up with the original chords. Resampling your sounds can be great as is, but can also be a great way to generate new layers. I low passed the original key sound slightly and used it to heavily sidechain compress the granular layer, resulting in something similar to the call and response trick I mentioned earlier, but with a nice granular twist. Let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see some more granular stuff on the channel. Number six, resampled reverb. Here we have a pretty simple chord stab from my pack Futura for Serum. Let's apply some reverb at 100% and make the pre-delay as short as possible so it's somewhat in sync with the original sound. 
we can record to audio and layer with our synth using sidechain compression to separate them. This sounds pretty cool, but the real benefit of having our reverb in audio is that we can process it separately without worrying about getting in the way of the original sound. The possibilities really are endless here, but just as an example, we could use something like some downsample distortion from Decimot. You could even add more reverb or delays to generate interesting movement. Number seven, physical modeling. In my opinion, one of the most underrated forms of synthesis is called physical modeling, which uses algorithmic programming to create sounds based on the harmonics of acoustic instruments. This can be an absolute secret weapon for layering with synths, adding a real sense of physicality. For example, we could take this plucky synth lead from my Solette for Serum pack and layer it with a variety of different physical models based on different instruments. Number eight, extreme pitched layers. Another quick layering trick you can use, often in the same synth, is to pitch an oscillator up to the limit of our ability to detect its actual pitch, adding a nice sparkle that cuts through the mix. Number nine, vocoder layering. Here we have a duophonic synth melody. We're gonna split the melody into two separate tracks, keeping the bottom layer as the same synth, but using our top synth layer as purely a carrier to modulate our vocoder audio channel. For this example, I used a splice vocal that I very loosely chopped up and hyper compressed. Playing with the carrier signal, in this case our muted top synth, can produce really interesting results, especially if automated. Finally, number 10, the technique I personally use the most, polyphonic splitting. In the last example, we took a duophonic melody and assigned a different sound to each note. It's great to keep in mind, however, that this can also be applied to chord sounds with more than two notes. Say, for example, we have some kind of chord progression triggering just one synth. Instead of duplicating the chords or adding another melody on top, I've instead assigned each note to a different synth, creating subtle variations between them, including different waveforms and effects. That brings us to the end of this video. Let me know which tip was your favorite or if there's any concepts in this video you'd like to see me dive into further. That's all for this one though guys. As always, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.